got another topology video for you about homeomorphisms and connectedness. So we're going to start off with defining what each of these concepts are and look at some examples that illustrate them as well. So the first thing, let's say you got a function between two topological spaces, x, whose topology is t, and let's say y is a set that has topology t prime. We're going to say that this function f is a homeomorphism if two things happen. Number one, f is a bijective, so it's one to one and on to. And number two, both f and its inverse are continuous functions. So let's look at an example of a homeomorphism. So let's let x be the real line, and let's let t be the usual topology on the real line. And so what I mean by that is, let's say that the open sets are generated by our usual uh, intervals from a to b without the endpoints included. So I mean that all the things that we'll consider open on the real line are going to be unions and intersections of these kind of nice intervals from a to b, uh, not including the endpoints. Let's let y be at the interval 0 to 1, and let's let uh, its topology be generated by, well, all things of the form of an open interval from A to B, like on the real line, but you intersect that with the interval from 0 to 1. So you might recognize that as the subspace topology or the relative topology. So something is open in Y if it is something that was open on the real line intersected with Y. Okay, so let's look at a concrete function, say from the real numbers to just this interval 0, 1. Let's say it's given by 1 divided by 1 plus e to the x. So this is going to be a homeomorphism. So we're going to prove that the real line is homeomorphic to the interval from 0 to 1. So we see number 1, it's bijective because you can compute its inverse. Its inverse is natural log of 1 minus x over x. And number two, if I'm on the real line with the usual topology, you know, I've got a lot of the good stuff that I know about uh, the fact that the real line with that topology, it's induced by a metric, right? The absolute value to measure the distance between two real numbers is at my disposal to, to try to talk about things that are open. And I can use that also to get some epsilons and deltas to try to talk about continuity. And uh, I'm not going to go through a lot of the details of that uh, in this particular video, but uh, I'm going to take for granted that because of all that that I know coming into a topology class, that 1 plus e to the x is continuous and non-zero. So if you take its reciprocal, that's going to be continuous as well. And then a similar story, we're going to invoke some properties about what we know about the natural log, uh, that that function f inverse is also continuous. So we're saying that uh, our function is bijective, and both it and its inverse are continuous, therefore it's a homeomorphism. You might also recognize this is kind of one of those cool functions that uh, tries to say that uh, there are as many real numbers as there are real numbers between 0 and 1. So those are kind of some of those uh, um, funny, um, uncountable ideas that kind of blow people's minds unless they're kind of used to thinking about you know, infinity in, those, in these ways. Anyway, back to what we're talking about in this video, back to topology. So you feel great about homeomorphisms now, I hear you, that's fantastic. So now let's talk about what's it mean for a topological space to be connected. So we're going to say that a topological space X, so the set is X and its topology is T, we're going to say the space is connected if there do not exist two disjoint non-empty sets U and V that are open, so they're in the topology on X, so they're open, uh, such that X is the union of U with V. Let's look at an example. And uh, let's say we've got the plane R2, and let's take the topology T to be the usual one. And what I mean by that, it's, it's generated by the open balls, where here is an open ball centered at x1, y1 of radius epsilon. The notation for it's a little bit clunky. It's B parentheses, and you kind of got two inputs, and I'm separating the inputs through the semicolon. I know it kind of looks like a J, sorry about that. But uh, that's my notation for what a ball centered at x1, y1 of radius epsilon looks like. But just so we're all crystal clear, what is it? A point like x2, y2 is in this ball. That means that it's Euclidean distance, you know, your good old distance function from college algebra. The distance between those points, of course, is less than this number epsilon. So that's the definition of what a ball is. So what are we interested in? The graph of a continuous function is going to be a connected subset of the plane. And uh, that is, just one more way to say this, if you've got a function f whose input is a real number and whose output is a real number, then its graph is an R2. If that's continuous, then the set gamma sub f, so that's capital gamma, which is all ordered pairs of the form x comma f of x, in other words, input comma output, this is going to be a connected set. And I've just got a little picture for you over here. So that is what the graph of such a function uh, might look like here. We're going to take a few things for granted in this, uh, in this uh, example, like number one, 
something like the real line itself is a connected set. So we're gonna invoke that pretty soon. So just in case I forget to mention it when we get to it, now you know. So I'm going to evoke that I know the real line's connected soon. All right, so how are we gonna to try to show that this green graph is connected? And you can kind of see intuitively, like I can't break it into two uh, disjoint open pieces. Or maybe you can't, I don't know. So to see this though, how you might do such a problem is by way of contradiction, that's what BWOC means, suppose that there exist two non-empty open sets, so U and V are in the topology, they're open, such that, well, U and V are disjoint, in other words, U intersect V is, not, is, uh, is the empty set, and that the graph of F is the union of U with V. So let's consider this special function, pi one, that goes from R2 to R, and its definition is pi one's gonna send a point to its X coordinate, and we call that the projection map onto the X axis. So here's a picture of what it does. You plug in an ordered pair, it just projects that onto whatever its X coordinate is. So the output is down there on the X axis. And so what are some things that we know about this? We know that this function is going to be continuous and it's an open map. And in case you haven't come across the term open map before, what does that mean? I mean that if I plugged in an open ball into pi one and think about what does that project that ball down to? Well, it projects it down to the interval from x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon. And to help you see that, I've drawn you a little picture here. If I've got my ball there and I think about just projecting all the ordered pairs in that ball onto their x coordinates, uh, you ought to just get that interval from x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon. All right, so that is going to be an open map. And uh, what that means is that the image of an open set is open. Don't get that confused with continuity. Continuity says the pre-image of an open set is open, but an open map goes with the kind of the forward direction and the image of an open set is open. And that's important for us because, well, if U and V were open uh, in the codomain, then, um, I'm sorry, if U and V, yeah, were open in the codomain, then uh, pi one of U and pi one of V are going to be open in R. So what else do we know? I know that uh, I've got a function on my hand. So pi one of U and pi two of V, they have to be disjoint, right? I know the X values can't have two different outputs. So like if the outputs weren't in U and V, right, I can't use those X coordinates over again. And then what do I also know? I also know that when I take pi one of U union with pi one of V, that should just give me back the whole real line because uh, what did I assume that it did? It split up this function, right? And so I know that function goes along the whole real line. Where is the function? Oh, he's up there, cool. Okay, so the, what does this say? What we've just shown, if you think about uh, these three little sentences here, pi one of u and pi one of e are open, pi one of u and pi two of e are disjoint, and pi one of u union pi one of v is equal to r, that just showed that the real line is disconnected. But of course, that's a contradiction because we talked earlier about the real line is a connected set. And so what do we get then? There's our contradiction. So we can conclude that the graph of F is gonna be connected as well. So what's our theorem that ties together homeomorphisms and connectedness? If you have got a homeomorphism between two topological spaces, then one space is connected if and only if the other space is connected. So another way to say this is that connectedness is a topological property. It's preserved under homeomorphisms. So we're gonna prove that, and then I'm gonna say a little bit more about what I mean uh, after the proof. The proof is actually kind of similar to the previous example that we just did. So let's go the forward direction. We do have an if and only if there after all. So suppose that the first set, or the first space, xt is connected. By way of contradiction, let's suppose that y with its topology t prime is disconnected. Then there exist disjoint non-empty sets u and v that are open in y, so they're in t prime, such that u union v gives you back y. So in other words, you can break y into these two you know, uh, disjoint open pieces. Now since f is continuous, I know that the pre-image of u and the pre-image of v should be open sets in x. In other words, those two sets are in the topology on x, which was t. Also, I know that the pre-image plays really nicely when you do intersections. So the intersection of the pre-image of u with the pre-image of v is the same thing as the pre-image of u intersect v. That's what I mean by pre-images play really nicely. It kind of distributes over that intersection is a horrible way to say it, but I think you probably see what I mean when I do say it. But so what do I know U intersect V is? Well, that's the empty set. And I know that the pre-image of the empty set should be empty. So what does that show? That shows that the pre-image of U and the pre-image of V 
uh, that's a disjoint. Those two sets are disjoint. And the other thing that I know is that well, x should be the pre-image of the whole codomain y, but y is the same thing as u union v. And I know that, again, pre-images play really nicely with unions, just like they did with intersections. I know the pre-image of the union is the same thing as the union of the pre-images. And so what does that say? That says that x is the union of these two disjoint open sets. Well, if I put it all together, all right, x is the union of two disjoint open sets. Well, that says x, with its topology, is disconnected. And that's a contradiction. Therefore, y, with its topology, had to be connected too. If you go the other direction, it's really just the same argument. You might just utilize, say, the inverse function that you're guaranteed because f's a homeomorphism in order to get there. So a similar argument would show that xt is connected when you suppose that y with its topology t prime is connected. Now something that I didn't write down, but the being connected, it depends on both the set and the topology, not just the set nor just the topology. It depends on both of them. So just be very careful with that. All right, so then what did I mean again in the beginning about how uh, the connectedness is a topological property? We know that homeomorphisms, they determine equivalence classes of topological spaces. So remember an equivalence class, um, that was the result of an equivalence relation where you had reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So what we're saying is we're finding like these little bins that we're gonna put similar topological spaces in. And what do we mean by similar or equivalent? So two spaces are equivalent, that means that there exists a homeomorphism between them. And so why that is important for us or what that allows us to do, you know, we're kind of acting like biologists where we want to classify things. We want to determine things, all possibilities that could happen. And so theorems like this are really helpful because if you know if you're in a given equivalence class, then either one, all of the spaces that are in that class are connected, or two, all of the spaces in that class are disconnected. So if two sets are equivalent to each other topologically, in other words, homeomorphic, then you can always expect everybody in that equivalence class to either be connected as well, or everybody in that equivalence class to be disconnected.